Protectors of the Sunnah. Sunnah Baba. Protector of the Sunnah. Welcome to another session of our series on the resurrection. And we are discussing the major resurrection. And who can tell us what is the difference between the major resurrection and the minor resurrection? Who can answer that for us? Anyone? What is the difference between the major resurrection and the minor resurrection? Or maybe there is no difference. Can anyone answer? Go ahead, Sister Ipti. Uh, the minor resurrection is when we die, we leave this earth. And the major resurrection is when Allah resurrects us on the day of judgment. Exactly. That's the difference. So when we say that we're speaking about the major resurrection, we're speaking about everything that's going to happen or what's going to happen on the day of judgment. And again, every prophet that Allah sent warned his people against the, the what's going to happen on a day of judgment. But our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went into more detail than the other prophets and messengers did. And he told us what would happen at death and what to expect on this day. And we've been speaking about some of the horrific things that the unbelievers will, will uh, incur on that day. We spoke about how um, they will be so frightened that they will even argue uh, with others. Who will they argue with on that day? Who can tell? What did we talk about when we spoke about how the unbelievers will have arguments on that day? Who will they argue with? Can anybody remember? Who or what are some of the things? Go ahead, Sister Mina. Um, some of them will be arguing with their own hands, saying that you took me here. Some, I mean, their legs to say that you took me here. Some of them be arguing with their hands, saying that you made me steal this. And some of them will be arguing with their personal gens. Exactly. That's what we spoke about the last time we met. And also, uh, what will they say about, uh, uh, we talked about how on that day, how even Jesus, the things that they used to uh, worship, you know, will approach them. What will Jesus do on that day? We talked about Prophet Jesus, alayhi salam, about how uh, uh, he will have a, a stand down against these people. What will Jesus say on that day to these people? Can anybody remember? Go ahead, Malion. He'll basically say, he will tell the people that um, I didn't command you, I didn't tell you guys to worship me. Like he'll defend his own honor because the people were lying on him. And then also the Muslims will like come in his defense and say that the people who used to like worship him, like um, the Christians are liars. Allah never commanded them to like worship him at all. That was a personal choice of theirs. Exactly. They will be face to face with Jesus and he will tell them, I never told y'all to do that nonsense. You know, subhanAllah. Allah. And what else did we speak about? Can anybody remember anything else about what these are, uh, uh, how the, um, Unbelievers will argue and dispute on this day out of their fear because uh, they know what's going to happen. Anyone else? Is anything they want to add? Go ahead, Sister Zarina. Um, they will try to argue and blame their hands and their body parts for when haram things or sinful things, and yeah. um, you know, blame their friends. Like it's like, no, you chose to disobey a law and disbelieve. Exactly. The bottom line is, you know, uh, they will be afraid, you know, and by the way, guys, um, 
The day of judgment, does anybody know how, how long it will last? How long will this day last? Does anybody know? Yes, anyone, take the mic. Uh, see, I, my um, you, uh, video is, is popping 70, up here. Yes, is go it 75,000 years? I might be got it wrong. Okay, does anybody, what do y'all say about her answer? She said 75,000 years. Is it 50,000 years? What do y'all think about her answer? Anyone else? How many years will this one day last? Okay, the correct answer. Years. Huh? For one day, well, for one day it would be thousand years. Okay, the correct answer. Oh, I'm sorry. The correct answer is, guys. None of us know because time in the hereafter is nothing like time in this world. You know, the Christians put a time limit on it, and the Jews do too. But the reality is that this day will last as long as it lasts, okay? Uh, because time in the hereafter is nothing like time in this world. One day could be 100,000 years, or one day could be a second in this world, okay? So Allah knows best. And I want y'all to remember that because this is a question that a lot of the Christians uh, talk about how long that day will last. No, no, not, Allah teaches us that time is not the same in the hereafter. Nothing is the same in the hereafter, not even time, okay? So it's gonna last until it lasts. It won't be over until the it's over. You know, it's over when it's over because every human being created will be judged that day. We don't know how long that's going to take. But while the people are standing being judged, the other people will be, you know, dealing with, you know, the horrors of not knowing what their predicament where they, uh, will be. So they'll be buying and trying to sell themselves and blaming and, and each other and all of this nonsense will be going on until it's over. So can, you can imagine how frightening that is. And so today we're going to continue by speaking more about some of the uh, horrific horrors that the people will have to uh, be subjected to on that day. And uh, let me put the PowerPoint up here. So this is session 10 of this series. Uh, not only will these people uh, sit there and argue with each other on that day, but they will also blame everyone and everything for what's happening to them. And they will even argue with their own personal gen. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation, the meaning, and his companion angel. Let me talk about his companion will say, okay? A lot of people ask the question, what happens to the angels that are assigned to you when you die? That's a good question. They ask what happens to the jinn. Well, the jinn that, that's assigned to you, he will be in the hellfire because he was an evil jinn put there to serve the purpose of trying to seduce you to disobey a law. He's going to be in hell forever. And if you end up in hell, he'll be your companion with you. Now, in regards to the angels, the angels that were assigned to you, they'll be your friends. Even if throughout the grave, we talked about how when you go through the question of the grave, it will be the angels who were assigned to your shoulders, the angels that were assigned to protect you. They will help calm you down when you're in the, the grave to help give you the ability to get through the questioning, okay? And then, you know, and not only that, you know, but they will also be witnesses for you or against you when you stand before a law to be judged. And as a law says here in the interpretation, the meaning your companion angel will say, here is this record with me. In other words, they were your angels that were assigned to you to write down your deeds. They're going to be there on the day of judgment to present your record to you. 
Allah will say to those angels, both of you, I want you to throw into the hellfire every stubborn disbeliever, everyone that stood in the way of good, everyone that doubted or transgressed my limits, everyone who set up gods with me. Then both of you cast him in the severity of the fire. Okay, so that's what's going to happen on a day of judgment. Your angels that were assigned to write down your deeds, they're going to be the ones to give you your book of deeds. Either you're going to get it in your right hand, you're going to get it in your left hand, or you're going to get it behind your back. And we talked about how if you are Muslim, getting it behind your back, that means that you're a sinner and you're going to do some time in hell. And then Allah is going to command those angels that wrote down your deeds to drag you off to that hellfire. Y'all see that? And what, <clears throat> what about your personal jinn? Your jinn will say, oh Allah, I didn't make him disobey you. He was himself. He chose to, to listen to me. All I did was, was try to convince him, but he didn't have to listen. And Allah will say to that jinn and to you, don't argue in front of me. I already knew what would happen. And I sent you or signed you as a jinn to be his threat. The sentence that comes from me cannot be changed. And I am not unjust. And that's when Allah will also tell the angels to take your jinn and, and drag him off to the hellfire with you. So our personal jinn will be our companion in the hellfire. And should you be a good Muslim and go to paradise, your jinn is still going to be dragged off into the hellfire. Everybody understand that? So Allah has answered the question, what happens? The angels assigned to you, they will be the ones to give you your book of deeds, either in your left, right, or behind your back. They will also be the ones who will drag you by your face and throw you in hell. And if you end up a person of paradise, they'll be the ones that will guide you to uh, a paradise. Okay. So that's what happens to them. And again, not only will the unbelievers argue with their own gin, we talked about how they will argue with their body parts too. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation, the meaning, remember the day that the enemies of Allah will be gathered into the fire, then they will be driven into it, the former ones being withheld till their later ones join them. Then when they reach the hell fire, their eyes and hearing and their skins will testify against them as to what they used to do. And they will say to their skins, why are you testifying against me? And their skin will say, Allah has allowed us to speak. Allah causes all things to speak. And he created you. And this is why I'm telling y'all, be careful of the choices you make in this world. Your body has rights over you. The prophet Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in an authentic hadith, your body is a trust. It's an amina between you and Allah. You were given your body and you were to take care of it on the day of judgment. And also when you're in that grave, it's going to complain. It's going to say, oh Allah, he or she didn't care for me properly. He or she didn't feed me when it was supposed to. He or she didn't give me the medicine that could have saved my body and, and not allow me to wither, wither like this. So when you brothers and sisters get sick and y'all refuse to take the medicine that the doctor gives you, your body is going to testify your kidneys, your blood pressure, your diabetes and all that stuff. Your body's going to testify against uh, how you didn't take care of none of your sicknesses. You didn't care for it. So this is bad. Your body will be a witness either for you or against you. So how can you say, oh, you think it's a conspiracy? You don't go to the doctor because you're afraid somebody trying to kill you or it's a white man thing and all this 
ignorant, I mean, total ignorance. And now you're laying up, knock, knock, knocking on death's door. You don't know if you're coming or going when all your sicknesses could have been prevented. Allah had a treatment for all your illnesses. Can you imagine, guys, let's talk about this for a minute, because there's too many Muslims out there that don't take care of their bodies. They refuse to take their medication and stuff. And we sit up and watch you wither down to nothing. We watch you die. It's like suicide. When all this could have been prevented, if you had taken your high blood pressure pills, you wouldn't have had uh, that stroke. If you had have taken your uh, diabetes medicine, you wouldn't have had that, okay? If you had exercised, your body wouldn't have become so obese to the fact where you can't even wipe you the back of your derriere, okay? If you had have taken that uh, COVID shot, you wouldn't have died from the COVID. You know, you would have been able to fight it off. I mean, come on. Can you imagine some of the conversations we're going to be having in that grave? And we're going to be wishing we could go back and do things the right way. But the reality is there is no coming back. That's it. You had your chance. And some of you, we watch you wither away and die. We see how Allah is giving you warning after warning after warning. He gave you an extra year to get it together, to get it together. And you never got it together. So he said, okay, I've given him a year to get it together. And he still won't go to doctor. So let me go on ahead and stroke him out of here. We can't play with a law like that, guys. For those of you who are not taking care of your body by taking the medicine that you're supposed to be taking, going to your physical therapies, your appointments, you men especially, because you got a problem. Uh, a lot of you brothers have that prostate cancer stuff that could have been prevented had you went and got a checkup if you catch it early. But no, you don't want to go to doctor. It's all about the white man trying to kill you. It's all about, it's, I'm a Muslim. They want to put a chip in me. Like somebody care about your little penis to put a chip in it. I mean, seriously, guys, can you imagine the conversations you will be having in that grave before you were thrown in that hell fire? Sad. We have to really think about it. Okay, so yes, the people will argue. Uh, the unbeliever will argue with his body parts. This is what will happen when people see with their own eyes the severe punishment of Allah. They will resort to lies and denials claiming that they were good people and that the testimony of the angels, the prophets, and even their body parts as liars. They'll be calling, oh, my hands are lying on me, Allah. I did take my medicine. No, you didn't. SubhanAllah. So the unbeliever will also argue with his body parts. We have a hadith where as the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the person will meet his Lord and Allah will say, did I not honor you and make you a leader and give you a wife and subjugate the horses and the cattle for you to use? And did I not let you become a leader? And the person will say, yes, indeed, you did a lot. And Allah will say, did you think that you would meet me, that the day would come when you'd have to stand before me? And a person will say, admit it. He'll say, no, I didn't a lot. And Allah will say, you know, I will forget you just as you forgot me. This is for those unbelievers out there. We got a lot of people who are Muslim and name only. And that's it. You forgot all about Allah. You didn't pray. You didn't even, you didn't even, you stopped being a Ramadan Muslim. You used to be a Ramadan Muslim, but you ain't even been a Ramadan Muslim for the past 10 years. So you forgot Ramadan and you forgot to pray. You forgot to talk to Allah. So guess what? Allah going to forget you and throw your behind in that hellfire. Okay. Same way we easily forget him. And then the prophet said, another man will meet Allah and Allah will say something to him. 
Then a third man will stand before Allah and Allah will say something similar to him. And then the third man will say, I believe in you, Allah, and I believe in your books and your prophet. I did pray. I did fast and I did give in charity. He will continue to praise himself as much as he can. But then Allah will say to him, shall we not send our witnesses to testify against you? And the man will wonder what witnesses would testify against him. And then a seal will be placed over the man's mouth. And then it will be said to his thigh, speak. So his thigh will speak. Then it will, his mouth will speak and his bones of what he used to do. How he didn't take his medicine. He didn't exercise. And he lying. He didn't get up and make fajr on, on time. That is the hypocrite. And that is the one with whom Allah will be angry. So we don't want to be that, guys. You can't fool Allah. You're going to be standing there, oh, I, I did pray. I did fast. I did do this. I did do that. And then Allah will have a seal placed over you. And can you see your hand saying, she didn't make wudu. You know, your, your thigh saying she didn't bow down properly. Your back saying she rushed it too much. Then your heart saying, guess what? She had high blood pressure too. She was diagnosed with that and didn't take a medicine to take care of me. You know, then you got your, your teeth testifying. Hey, she never brushed me. Then you got your, 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 your uh, private parts testifying. Never took a stingin either, Allah. She used to urinate and defecate, didn't wash me either. Hello. Can y'all imagine that? What a horrific thing that the hypocrite and the, uh, um, the unbeliever will have to endure. So this debate will take place between a person and his body parts. And when the prophet talked about this, he smiled. We also have, uh, according to another hadith, that the prophet smiled and said, do you know why I'm smiling? And the people said, Allah knows best. He said, I'm smiling because of what the slave will say to his Lord. This person will say, oh, Allah, did you not promise to be, not to be unjust to me? And Allah will say, indeed, I did say I wouldn't be unjust. The man will say, I will only accept a witness from myself. Then Allah will say, you yourself are sufficient as a witness against yourself. And that's why your body parts are speaking on your behalf. See how ignorant we are. See how ignorant we are. And then the recording angels will also uh, uh, talk, speak as witnesses. Okay, so here we can see, guys, uh, there's no getting around this. You know, everything we say and everything we do is being written down right now. Not a word, not an action escapes us without those body parts that are performing the actions being a witness to testify and those recording angels and those angels assigned to the front and back. Okay. Listen to what Ibn Kathir said. He said that there's a hadith that Ibn Abbas said the people will argue on the day of judgment to such an extent that the soul will begin to argue with the body too. The soul will say to the body, you did such and such. And the body will say to the soul, you told me to do it. You inspired me to do it. Then Allah will send an angel to judge between them. And he will say to them, you are like a paralyzed and a blind man who go into a garden. The paralyzed man tells the blind man, I can see some fruit over there, but I can't reach it. And the blind man says to him, climb on top of me and you can get it. So he will climb on him and get it. Which of them is the sinner? They will both say, they will say both of us. So the angel will say to them, you have passed judgment against yourselves. In other words, the body is like a vehicle for the soul and the soul is the passenger. 
You know, when that, when the people, the hypocrite gets angry because his hands and stuff are talking, he's going to say, oh, Lord, don't listen to him. How can they witness? I'm my own witness. And Allah will say, you're right, but your body was part of you. You controlled it. It was a trust given to you, a loan given to you. You manipulated it, controlled it, and told it what to do. So you did. You just witnessed against yourself. SubhanAllah. See how magnificent Allah is. And so because of this, when the unbelievers and hypocrites see that they can't get out of the fact that their bodies will testify against them, they will begin to hate themselves. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation, the meaning. Allah's aversion was greater towards you in this life when you used to reject faith than your aversion towards one another is. When you were called to the faith, you refused. So the people will start to hate themselves for refusing it. And they will uh, beg Allah for forgiveness. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation, the meaning on the day when their faces will be turned over in the fire. And they will say, if only we had obeyed Allah, if only we had obeyed the prophet Muhammad. And they will say, oh Allah, we obeyed our leaders instead. And they misled us. Give them double punishment. So we're going to hate ourselves. And because of that intense <clears throat> hatred, you will ask Allah to punish those who misguided you, that you chose to listen to. <clears throat> As Allah says in the interpretation, the meaning, those who disbelieve will say, our Lord, show us those amongst the jinn and men who led us astray so that we can crush them under our feet so that they become the so they can become the lowest so they'll be wanting to punish those who they chose to listen to and that's why i'm telling you guys be careful seeking knowledge of this religion is an obligation upon us all but you've got to be careful who you choose to learn from who you choose to follow and listen to, okay? If you choose to listen to an innovator, you're gonna answer for that, okay? We have to be very selective in what, who we choose to lead us. So again, these are some of the punishments and some of the things that our prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam detailed as to what will happen to the people of sin on the day of judgment. So I want to stop right here. Subhanakalahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta. Astaghfiruka wa tubilay. Are there any questions?